time God Yes he is yeah. He's an on time God Yes he is He's an on time God Yes he is Come on He's an on time God Yes he is Yes, he's on time, baby. I thought I was going to be late with this reunion. Baby, not tonight. Girl. He's on time, okay? He's on time, and he's ready, okay? Now, let me tell y'all something. Before we get started, before we get into this review, before we get into this reunion, we're going to go ahead and say a little prayer, okay? okay so, everybody bow their heads. <laughs> Dear Universe, as we come to you this Sunday night, we ask you to open our hearts, open our minds, and let the people know that the truth will set you free, okay? I'm not one of those YouTubers that has been bought like the girls think that I have been. That's those other girls over there. That's not me, okay? Quiet as it's kept, <laughs> your mama, <laughs> your sister, <laughs> your cousin, <laughs> your aunt, <laughs> and your dog can get it over here, okay? Now, I don't know about them other people, but over here, everybody can get it, okay? I don't give a damn who you are or what you got going on. We might go easy on the kids because the kids ain't doing nothing, but everybody else, they can get it. All right. Thank you, universe. Y'all ready? <laughs> now, I want to apologize because, you know, I got my got me a little cocktail. You know, she already kicking in. Um, I want to apologize because I posted my review for Potomac and I did not realize that I posted the, the thumbnail was a picture of Melody and Martell, but the title was The Real Housewives of Potomac season three, episode six. I don't know. It was the Potomac title, basically. And I did not realize. And in the first comment, I saw somebody was like, basically, you got Potomac in the title. And I was like, girl, what, what, is, girl, what is she talking about? You know, think I know everything. Don't we all do that, right? We think we all know everything. So I'm like, girl, once I'm looking at the title, I'm looking at the picture. I'm like, I don't know what she's talking about. Now, mind you, I ain't had nothing to drink but water. So this is my, this is my, I took the first couple of sips before I press record. So I'm like, what is she talking about? I'm sitting here looking like for 15 seconds. Then I finally realized that, girl, I had made a little boo-boo. So I'm sorry for those who thought that they were getting the Potomac review um, earlier tonight. But no, it was just a mistake. Girl, you could tell what was already on my mind. Now, let me just go ahead. I have already did a video about the fashions. But there are a few things that I want to say. When I look at everybody sitting down, all BS aside, <laughs> nobody just blew me away. The more I looked at Candace, I hated everything she had on. That dress looked real homemade and cheap to me. Ashley looked very much 1999 homecoming queen. Robin looked like she wanted to show off a little bit of skin, so she showed off her shoulder. <laughs> you know, Giselle, I mean, she always looks an absolute disaster. Um, Wendy, I didn't like that. Like, Wendy's dress really was just a dress I've seen at the Galleria hanging on the rack. You know what I'm saying? Karen... Out of everybody who I looked at, even sitting down, I didn't like that mesh. Oh, I hated that mesh on Karen. But if I had to give it to anybody in my top two, it would still be a scholar and probably Karen. Now, I know some of y'all think I don't like Wendy. Hey, Wendy girl. I actually like, because I know she be watching my videos. Hey, girl. Girl, I actually like you. But girl, I have to say this, sister. Girl, I might like you, but your makeup artist, damn show sure don't. Because, girl, you was up there looking like the living dead. I don't know if it was just my TV. I just got a new TV, okay? I don't know if it was my TV. I don't know if it, I need to correct some stuff with the light. I don't know if it's the HD or what. But, baby, you was up there looking like paddle, girl. You was up there looking like you had just dipped your whole face. 
Girl, like you just, somebody got your face and just dipped your face in some flour. And said, girl, here go some lip, chip, some lip gloss and girl sent you out on the stage. Now, I'm not the makeup girl. I don't know nothing about no makeup. So all the makeup girls and boys out there, y'all let me know was Mia makeup a mess. Mia makeup was a mess. I thought Robin's makeup was a mess. The only one who looked really together from head to toe was a scholar. And quiet as it's kept, I'm about to say something about a scholar dress. And I know it sounds like I'm just pick it, picking right now, but low key, a scholar's fabric of that dress I almost looked cheap too. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Anyways, all right, y'all. So, Andy, of course, goes around to all the girls. You know how he, you know, he goes to each room and chit chats before the show starts and. He gets to Candace's room and she lets him know that she's no longer the Twitter disaster. There are other people who I guess have taken that spot, which is AKA Mia. Um, the show starts. They let people know that Anita Baker, <laughs> the girl, say the girl, y'all, I, I want to ask y'all a question. Y'all faves, all y'all faves from Housewives who got songs. How many of them got a shout out by a nigga from Anita Baker? Okay, I'm gonna wait. <laughs> Matter of fact, I ain't gonna wait because I can tell y'all right now it was only one. Okay. Um, they talked about Giselle's fashions. I never knew until this moment that Giselle had a fashion, uh, a, a, a stylist. I, I, I don't want anyone to be without a job, you know? I, I think everyone deserves employment. I mean, unless you want to be one of those girls who just, you know. But I think everybody deserves employment and I don't want nobody to lose their job. <laughs> yeah. And girl, if you're watching this, whoever you are, your calling is not to be a stylist. Maybe your calling, you know what I think it is? Whoever dresses Giselle, dresses Giselle like she's always going to some type of church convention. And I'll say this, and I've said this before, and I want to keep saying it. I do think that when you get on these type of shows, like the Real Housewives, where they're supposed to, from what I understand, present to us that they live these fabulous, highfalutin, you know, luxurious lifestyles, right? And then, girl, I look at you, and you're looking like just the mama at the PTA meeting, which ain't nothing wrong with that, but girl, this is not the PTA meeting. That's the problem. And that's what Giselle always gives. And she gives me very much, like somebody said in the comment section, girl, Giselle dress how I dress when, I, when I'm going to Walmart. She really throws on some uh, some tennis shoes, a hoodie, throw her hair in a ponytail, throw some makeup on and go to the store. Cause she looks a mess anyways. But Giselle don't think she look a mess, but everybody, and the, the, the crazy thing about it is, is at this point, I really do believe that Giselle thinks that she doesn't look a mess because too many people say that Giselle looks a mess and she still believes that she doesn't look a mess. So in Giselle's head, I think that we should might, we might as well just stop saying Giselle looks a hot ass fucking mess because she, don't, she ain't gonna never believe it. Because Giselle, <laughs> anyway. Um, when Karen flatlined about Giselle's fashions, I hollered, she's consistent. Um, what did the group think about Mia, their first impressions? Of course, they asked Candace first. Candace said she actually liked Mia at first. <sighs> Giselle starts to talk, and then Candace says that, well, you know, well, Mia is a liar. Um, Giselle asked Candace, why did she say that when she was speaking? Well, that's, that wasn't her first impression of Giselle. I mean, of Mia. Um, Mia... <sighs> I mean, Mia, I, if y'all go back and watch my very first review of this season, I let y'all know that Mia was a liar. I said it. Excuse me. I said it in my review. I told, I said, baby, Mia is a liar. If you ask someone, especially with Mia being, Mia says she's younger than me. Mia says she's 36. Okay. Mia says she's 36. You're not going to get me... To, like, if you ask Ashley, I guarantee you, if you ask Ashley, how old is she? How old is Michael? And what's the age difference? She'll baby be able to spit it off the top of her dome like that because of that relationship. You're not going to get me to believe that someone like Mia and Ashley, who ha they both have older husbands, 
that they don't get asked that question quite often. No, what's the age gap between you and your husband? How old is your husband? How old are you? So that's Mia started off lying right then. And then it even went on throughout the first episode. Like, girl, you're sitting here talking about Mia literally, and Mount, correct me if I'm wrong, acknowledge me when I'm right, like Funky Don't Even Say Baby. But Mia said that she had her coochie worked on because of childbirth. Then she flipped around and said that she had three C-sections. Three girl, I thought you said at the table that you got your coochie worked on because of childbirth. One of y'all tried to tell me in the comment section that you can't, girl, I don't know. I don't know nothing about no coochie. That's not my area. <laughs> you know, I like niggas. Anyways, all right. Um, so, Giselle, I don't know why Giselle felt the need. You know who Giselle reminded me of? Giselle reminded me of What's those girls' name from Beverly Hills? Lisa, Kyle, and uh, Dorette. <laughs> okay, shout out to Dorette. Um, when they would always try to chime in to try to help Erica. That's how um, Giselle, that's who Giselle reminded me of. Like, why are you helping, that's how, that's when I'm, why are you helping Mia explain how she met her husband, where she met her husband at, what, like, why? Why does she need that assistance from you? Um, Mia tells Candace that her mom said that she was going to pray for her. Candace says she don't need that prayer. I said, I know that's right. Um, Mia and how she got her money. <sighs> this is what it comes down to for me. Okay. Mia, if it wasn't for G, you would probably still be selling pussy, period, okay? Now, massage envy and all that shit that you said that you had, you had, you got that because of G, of his investment. But if it wasn't for you meeting G at the strip club, you would probably still be hoeing, girl, and trying to sell it to the highest bidder. I'm not trying to slut shame and hold nobody, and, and, you know, and, you know, talk about nobody selling no coochie because I done sold a little bit of dick before, okay? We done all, we done all had to, you know, work a honest, but it pays the bills, okay? We done all did a little bit of hoeing in our life. Whether it's only fans, just for fans, right? Whether you had to make sure the rent was paid, so you had to call that nigga who you said you weren't going to ever talk to no more. He was going to give you about $700 to go on your rent, but you know you had to go and sleep with him. You know, we done did some shit. We done did, we done all done did some shit. So I'm not trying to slut shame Mia, but I am saying that girl, Mia, stop trying to act like you just this self-made woman. Because bitch, quiet is this kept and as much as don't nobody want to say it, every bitch on that stage had to marry into their lifestyle, except for Candace. And I think Giselle. And maybe even Robin. So, but God will say this, but I ain't gonna say every. But girl, from what I understand, correct me if I'm wrong, Ashley, Bitch, your mama was in a tent under 59. Hello? So we know you had to go crawl in the bed with Michael old ass for that penthouse. Mia? Karen? Right? Girls from the past? No tea, no shade. Hazel? You know what I'm saying? So, anyways, girl. Mia being a flip-flopper. Mia was a flip-flopper. Um... And she pretty and the viewers pretty much got mad at Wendy when me when Wendy called it out. The truth of the matter is Mia was the one who approached Giselle and Robin and asked them for their telephone numbers. And then when they tried to get with Mia, Mia tried to pull these stunts and shows about getting with her. Who was it? Her assistant to try to make time. Bitch, you asked for my phone number. I didn't ask for yours, because bitch, I could have got my plate and went home. Okay? You stop me talking about what's your phone number, girl. And now that I'm trying to hang out with you and get to know you, it's, girl, go through my assistant because I'm busy. Girl, <laughs> right then and there, bitch, that, that, bitch, I would have reached up to that right-hand corner, bitch, hit edit, and then hit delete. Because, bitch, I don't, girl, you got me, you got the wrong one. Girl, you were saying how Giselle had this great spirit or uh, not a, a good heart. Even though you were there and you were very present and I'm hoping aware, I guess aware, when the argument happened between 
Karen and Giselle. You heard Karen say, even though it was a bold-faced lie, you heard Karen say that Giselle wished death on her husband. And even after that, you still said that Giselle had a kind heart and you still asked for her number. And so when you got to Karen's home and you started talking about that, oh, Giselle is this and Giselle is that, and Wendy was like, oh, so now she this and that, but girl, just the other night, girl, she had a good heart. Girl, you were flipping. You were flopping. Okay. Um, that's it for Mia. Giselle and the commentator that Wendy says that she knows she knew some commentator that dated Giselle. She doesn't know if it's the same commentator that Giselle was talking about, but she does know someone who dated Giselle. Giselle says the commentator doesn't know Wendy. That doesn't mean that Wendy doesn't know him. Okay. Um, and how do you know? And that's another thing too, Giselle. How do you know that the commentator doesn't know Wendy? Did you bring Wendy up in conversation? Like, oh, do you know Wendy or Seppa? And did he say no? Right? Um, I, I took it as a joke. You know, she said, though, yeah, I think they mentioned Van Jones. And <laughs> Wendy said, oh, no, I, it's, it's not Van Jones. That's not her type. <laughs> I thought he was about, I was about to say, because, you know, Van Jones' ex wife is white. So that's what I thought she meant. But she said that uh, Van Jones likes women with integrity. Anyways, the house, Giselle's house, she said that it's come a long way. You know, I was talking to my sister the other day, my, my best friend, and I was telling him, because he was like, well, no, sister, you know, she's still working on it. No, 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 no. It's one thing if it was just sticks and stones there, right? But we pretty much are almost at the finished, the finish line with that house. What we see is what we're going to get. Now, she might throw some different paint on the walls, right? But as far as the structure of that home, that's that house. I guarantee you, when you go back to that house, the only thing Giselle was working on on the outside was the front. That little piece that she was, I guess the carpet, well not the, car, the the porch. That was the only thing that Giselle was working on. And that, and I guess some stuff on the inside. That house is a mess. It's tacky and it does give Ronald McDonald vibes, okay? Shout out to Karen. Okay, let me just be honest with y'all. I know this might be an unpopular opinion, but I don't want to talk about it. I'm going to talk about, talk about it, but... I just feel like it's unnecessary. I thought it was unnecessary for them to bring up Jamal the way that they did. For what? Jamal not on this season. He already said he never coming back. Okay. I mean, I get, I get that some things transpired last year. You know, Jamal did his own, I guess, rendition of the Binder Chronicles. You remember when he went live or put up a pre-recorded video? I can't, I can't remember. I do remember us talking about it because I was in Atlanta. And remember, I was supposed to be going out that night, but I was too busy being messing with y'all helpers, and I don't think I went. I don't even think I went out that night. Oh, I did go out. It was too. Ooh, girl, they had no girl. Oh, girl, I did. I walked. I walked by Bulldogs, I think, and none of the girls had on mask in Atlanta, girl. Um, but anyway, Shaw, you know they talked about Jamal. <sighs> Giselle low key lied. Let's call a thing a thing. She really low key slipped up and said that her and Jamal were seeing each other, but she stopped herself. So her and Jamal were never really, really, really committed, I guess. Monogamous, you know. Um, I will give Giselle this much. This is how you know the people who, like I said, you could tell the people that just tuned in for the first time because someone says, Giselle, you're not open about your relationship. Giselle actually was season one. She wrote a whole goddamn book, Quiet as It's Kept. Like, Giselle was open about what happened between her and Jamal. She said what she said, and that was that was what it was. Now, has she been vocal every season since ever every since season one? No, because there's really low key no reason to. I was introduced to y'all as Giselle Bryant. This is what happened with me and my marriage, and that's the end of it. Now she started talking to the guy, so I guess in some way she owes some type of explanation. But girl, that explanation should have been talked about last year when Jamal was actually on the show. Not this year. Like, why are we talking about Jamal Bryant? And y'all know, I don't even see it, for, see it for Jamal like that. But I'm just saying, he's not even on the show. Um, they talk about Giselle being emotionless. Is it emotionless? Emotionless. Girl, anyways, I have no emotions, girl. You can tell the drinks on the kick in, girl. I still got this much left, girl. Let me take a sip. Girl, we're not gonna waste no we're not gonna waste no cocktail. And she be watered down and stuff. I'm a still drinker. Um, Karen. 
Karen, you do shame the girls for not having a man. But the truth of the matter is that's like most people. That's like most women in my opinion. Sorry. Um, the go-to for, like, even men, too. That's why That's why you ain't got no woman. Uh, you know what I mean? That's, that's why you ain't got no man because your attitude. That's why no man don't want you because your attitude. Karen, you literally started the season talking about Karen. I mean, talking about Robin and Giselle not having no man. Let's just keep it honest. And you ended the season talking about them not having a man or making some type of comment about them in their relationship. You did, Karen. You did. Um, the $800,000 $800, taxes. Can't, Giselle, that ain't got nothing to do with Giselle. I believe Giselle, it is what it is. Um, a scholar comes out. Um, she pretty much says that she would like to take Giselle on a new, well, she didn't say it. They asked her. Andy asked her. She says Giselle, she would like to take Giselle under her wing um, to make Giselle's fashion um, styles, choices more current. I said, come on for being current. Um, oh, girl, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go, girl. We talking about Candace. All right. Is Chris getting paid? <sighs> Can I say something, y'all? I know, I, I think that for some of us, we were expecting more out of Mia. But Mia, the stuff that Mia be saying, it don't even be making sense. Like, Mia says getting paid for sex is like prostitution. And then she <laughs> follows and says, I only speak about things I'm familiar with. <laughs> Candace said being a hoe. Girl, so you basically just told us that you, do, that you used to sell pussy. Like... <laughs> Mia Loki be telling on herself, and I don't even think she realized she be telling on herself. Girl, I have told y'all from the girl, not from the get, but I told y'all. Go back and watch some of my reviews. I told y'all that Mia was selling pussy. And ain't nothing wrong with that. Okay? But girl, you you what y'all wasn't gonna try to get me to believe that Mia was that Mia then had to get that cooch worked on because that old ass man was just banging her back out like that. No, 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 no. Mia was a hoe. Mia was a lady of the night. Mia used to come out. Her favorite time of the day was after midnight. Hello? Girl. Okay? Um, Dorothy. Dorothy is a mess. Um, Mia says, Mia says, Mia says a real friend would have told her mom, um, would have told her friend her mom was being messy. So, we talking about mamas, right? I thought we wasn't talking about mamas. We talking about mamas? Because the truth of the matter is, Dorothy was, Dorothy was definitely being messy. De Dorothy was definitely being messy. Y'all remember how I dragged Dorothy and called her trash and all that, right? But the, it's also can, it also can be the truth that once upon a time not long ago, and this is just as nice as I can put it, Mia, you were the one who said that you had to basically take care of yourself as a child. Girl, once upon a time, your mama was low budget. And I think that a lot of people would actually agree to that if they take Candace out of the equation. If we all clicked onto the shade room or all true tea or Hollywood unlocked and we saw a story of a woman who had left her child to fend for herself and then threw her in the foster system. And she was sentenced 20 years in prison but served eight. We will say she was low budget. We're not going to play this fucking game. At least I'm not. Okay? Was Dorothy messy as fuck? Absolutely. fucking -lutely. And I'm glad Candace let it be known that she cussed Dorothy the fuck out. But see, a lot of y'all wanted the satisfaction of Candace disrespecting her mother, even though Candace was well into her, was well, was well. She had every right to cuss her mama out because what her mama did was unacceptable, right? But a lot of y'all wanted the satisfaction of Candace cussing her mama out on camera, even though even though we know that a lot of y'all would never talk to y'all mama that way. But Candace lets it be known that she had she did really curse her mother out and she said some things that she probably shouldn't have said. Um, 
uh, the relationship between her and her family are pretty, it's pretty much kind of like, I don't know, I'm not gonna say damaged, but it's definitely bruised. It's definitely bruised for the moment um, because again, Dorothy just was out of line. Dorothy was definitely out of line at that goddamn video shoot. But that does not take away from the fact that Mia was out of line too. Mia should have done the same thing that a scholar and Wendy did. Oh, girl, that ain't got nothing to do with us. Girl, let's go over here, right? But she didn't do that. She engaged in the mess. So while I might can't cuss my mama out on camera, I cuss her ass out in private. But bitch, guess who I can cuss out? Mm-hmm. Guess. Right. That's how that worked. Um, a viewer basically... A viewer basically said, Mia, girl, your life was low budget, so how can you come for Candace? That's what I got from it. Um, the mama comment, you know, this is what I, this is what it comes down to for me. All right, all right, class. Just let me just say this. I think that if Candace comes back next season and I'm almost sure that probably the same group of ladies will return for season seven. I think that Candace, you should stay away from your mama comebacks, right? We know as black people, and I don't give a damn who, if they say they ain't said it, they probably telling a lie, that we've said your mama. Now, you, your argument definitely could be, girl, saying your mama is so childish and immature. That may be true, right? That, that, that may be true that your mama is a childish comeback that we would say when we were children. But it still doesn't take away from the fact that we would say it. And then even when you're joning and roasting, right, you say your mama. So since people have a big deal with Candace saying your mama, sister, when you come back next season, if... Mia comes after you, do what Portia did. Didn't nobody have a problem with that? Accuse Mia and G of premeditated R-A-P-E, right? Don't say your mama. Do what Portia did and accuse G of cheating on Mia and having an alias like Portia did Todd. I do like Karen did and attack Giselle's mental health like she allegedly did the first episode when she mentioned Sing Sing. Or do like Ashley did to Katie when she attacked Katie's mental health, or when she attacked Ray's penis. So clearly, we have the we've set we've set the the bar of what is unacceptable, and what's unacceptable is saying your mother. But what's not what's okay is accusing someone of premeditated R A P E. What's okay is going after someone's husband. What's okay is like Giselle did when Giselle was allegedly about to bring a rumor onto the show that questioned the paternity of Monique's son. So those things are okay. So don't say your mama no more, right? That y'all say Candace is the common denominator, right? No, what the problem is, if you really want to just be 100 about it, once Candace got onto this show, and the girls found out that she had a little bit of money or that her mama and daddy had a little bit of money and that her mama and daddy could put $200,000 or $225,000 towards a wedding, right? Once they found out that Candace's mama was paying some of her bills, they never had respect for Candace. So Candace became the punching bag of the jokes and the little brats and girl, you're a little girl, a spoiled brat, right? That's what that's how that whole situation started. But the truth is, like Candace says, or said tonight, I don't start, I respond. And because my response is something that you don't like, then all of a sudden it all falls onto me. Giselle says, and then I get I, okay, that's all fine, but you just need to edit yourself. No, bitch, you don't need to fuck with me. Right? Like I said in my last video, and this is no tea, no shade. This is no tea, no shade at all, right? I love all YouTubers. I ain't got no problem with nobody on this goddamn platform. I watch everybody. I try to support everybody. I try to click, right? Click the like button, all that stuff. But we're not going to sit here and act like we don't be getting our black asses on YouTube, right? Especially as I see other gay male YouTubers like myself talking about these women, 
calling them bitches and hoes, talking about the way they dress. Some of y'all even talk about the way they look. I done kind of chimed on it a little bit too. I try to stay out of that. You know, I'm more of a, I just talk about your makeup and dress and your wig, right? We're not going to act like we ain't never had YouTubers out here talking about people, kids and grandkids. So all of this bullshit about, oh, it's certain stuff that you just don't say. As much shit as we talk on this motherfucker and we got the nerve to be on these YouTube streets talking about what people should and should not say. I think that we are the last motherfuckers that ought to be telling anybody about what they should or should not say. Okay? She said this and this was her response. That's me going forward. She said this and this was her response. He said this, and this was his response. Now, can some things go overboard? Absolutely. If I slap you and you go get a gun and shoot me in my brain, most people will probably say, girl, you kind of overreacted. But if we are in a war of words, and my words hurt worse than yours, sorry, sister, you should have been quicker on your motherfucking feet. Because let's just keep it all the way, all the way 100. And I'm not even going to really even go in like I could go in. Mia is the last person on the show that should talk about anybody, anybody's upbringing. So, girl, when you start calling people spoiled brats, do you really want to talk about somebody being a spoiled brat? Especially when you don't let us know that, bitch, you have to fend for yourself because your mama was in the streets. Like, it's certain stuff like that. That's why I think Candace said, girl, out of all the stuff I could have said, I really kept it light on your ass because I could have lit your ass on fire. And that's just true tea. While it might be mean, right? While it might be insensitive, I think that we all need to realize that when you're into when you're getting into an argument, you may want to before you open up your trap, you may want to say, "Girl, do I really want to go at it with this person?" Because if they say they can say this, 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 and this about me, because quiet as is kept, the shit that y'all say about Candace really ain't no. Your mama pay for your bills. You mad because her mama got money and yours don't. She a spoiled brat. You mad because you probably had to be up fixing your own goddamn food because your mama and daddy was in the streets. Okay, next. I'm not saying that Candace is innocent, right? But I just don't remember a time that Candace has really started with these ladies. I really honestly don't. They have had a problem with Candace since she walked up on the scene. And they have been disrespectful since the beginning. Did your mama pay for your ring? Remember Cherie saying that? It is what it is. We're gonna see what we want. We're gonna see what we want to see on these shows. All right, y'all. I think that's it. Let me make sure. Oh, Mia saying that if her mother relapsed, it's on Candace. Bullshit, like Candace called it. Baby, you are the one who decided to parade your mother around on this goddamn show for a storyline. That ain't got shit to do with me. My mother wanted to tell her story. No, she didn't. No, she didn't. No, she didn't. Your mom was too busy crying every time she sat down in front of you. She calls Candace a small brat. Andy says, you were almost physically attacked. Almost. Almost. Bitch, did you see the clip last year, Miss Andy Cohen? Bitch, it took about nine, eight to ten people to pull Monique off of Candace. You think that was almost physically attacked? Let me grab y'all by y'all fucking head and see if you say you were almost physically attacked. They talked about the butter knife incident. I'm so tired of y'all bringing up that butter knife. Let me just say this. If y'all can understand or you holler and scream about Monique feeling disrespected by Candace in a barn when Candace was across a table dancing and twirling and singing and bouncing up and down. But then all of a sudden, your understanding goes out of the window when you see someone in someone's home disrespecting them. Candace threw that knife like this. Ashley had to damn near break her neck to see where the knife went. If Ashley felt that threatened by the fact that Candace threw a knife, her ass would have went and pressed charges. And not only 
if she felt some type of way about Candace throwing that knife because she disrespected Candace in her home, the bitch wouldn't have walked back in and, her, in and out of her house two or three times after Candace told her to leave. So y'all can cut it with that butter knife bullshit that y'all be trying to pull because if Ashley was that goddamn bothered and threatened by her for her goddamn safety in life, she wouldn't have kept walking into the goddamn girl house after the butter incident. Because Candace threw the butter knife, right? And then Ashley left, she walked back in. She left, she walked back in, right? But Candace is the common denominator. Candace is the common denominator because they know that Candace is the easiest punching bag, right? You know how Portia was the, was the common denominator? That bitch got into three physical altercations and accused someone of premeditated R-A-P-E. And that bitch got her own show. That's how I know a lot of motherfuckers in this world ain't wrapped too tight. I don't know. I just, I just think it's weird that. I mean, like, like I was saying earlier, like I have us as gay men. We get on YouTube every day talking shit, talking shit about somebody's wife, girlfriend, whether it's celebrity or not, right? Some people even talk about people's kids and grandkids, you know. So if you talk about Blue Ivy, Jay-Z has every right to send his goons up to you. Because real life, in real life, in uh, some real hood shit, you'll get your knock, you, you get your ass knocked off your block talking about somebody's kid. And you're talking about a nigga who probably got all types of power, control, and money. You see what I'm saying? Like, it sounds crazy to me when I hear, again, especially YouTubers, Talk about somebody deserving to get their ass whooped for talking shit. And you just call you just call some woman a bitch. Somebody's wife a bitch. Or a hoe. But based off that, you but Candace should get her ass drugged for saying yo mama. <laughs> It's just the weird, it's just weird to me. It's just weird to me. It's just weird to me. Like you were swerping down, Candace was out here just really on some rah, rah, rah. Like that whole, oh, it's a rat ta 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 Girl, please. You know what I'm saying? And like as much as y'all swerving down y'all from the hood, Candace is what is what girl <laughs> no Tino Shay. As much as y'all clown y'all say y'all from the hood, Candace is what gets y'all riled up and bothered. As much as some of <laughs> I'ma say something and y'all can take this how y'all want to take it. I think that it is extremely sad that the only reason why the majority of y'all want Monique to come back to Real Housewives of Potomac is so that she can be violent. Like, so she can be violent towards another person, another black woman, someone who she considered her sister, right? You don't want Monique to come back to Real Housewives of Potomac so that you can see what's going on with her family or to see, you know, what's going on with her businesses, you know, not for lazy moms or her essential oil line, right? You don't want to see what's going on, you know, how big the kids have gotten, what's going on with Chris and his, you know, extensive portfolio. You only want Monique to come back so she can fight. That's the only reason. Like, that's the only reason. So she can drag somebody. So she can beat somebody's ass. That's why you want Monique to come back. Not because you really and truly want to see what's going on in her life. Not because you really and truly support Monique. Because like the diva now been, been asking for the longest. What was the last thing that Monique talked about on her podcast? Since y'all so big on supporting Monique. What did she talk about last time? When was the last time you streamed drag queens? When was the last time you purchased something from her line, right? You don't support Monique. You just want Monique to come back so she can fight. It's sad. 
But like I said, girl, people gonna believe what they want to believe. People gonna see something where they want to see stuff. You know, again, as you, as someone who is a YouTuber and someone who gets on her saying a lot of shit, I be damned if a motherfucker think they gonna come up and body slam me and beat my ass because you don't like something I said. Now, maybe you can say something back to me. And, you know, in the real world, what happens is if you put your hands on somebody, they go to the cop. Right? Anyways. That's all I want. I'll talk to y'all later. I guess a lot of y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that a lot of y'all probably should be getting y'all ass whooped. Goons being sent after y'all, you know, in the next couple of days, right? Based on the fact that, girl, when you talk shit about somebody's wife or son or daughter or children, you get your ass whooped. So y'all let me know how that work out for y'all, okay? Because I'm calling the cops. <laughs> and I'm pressing charges till I can't press no more. Press, 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 press. I'm going to turn into a real, real, a real, 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 real rich white woman. Yeah. Uh-huh. Right. Because y'all hoes ain't over there talking about Lisa Vanderpump and Lisa Renner and Erica Jane and Doris. She get their ass whooped and drugged up and down the streets. It's only for the black girl. And them hoes over there are stealing money from orphans, widows, and victims and shit. <laughs>